<clears throat> hey guys, this is Thurit, and welcome back to another episode of Boffer Basics. And today I'm going to show you how to build an arrow. Uh, today I'll be using a Forged Foam Arrow Kit, uh, though you can make your own cams and that yourself, and you can check out our other video on how to do that. Uh, the Forged Foam Kit comes with a pre-made can of 2-pound poly. It's got a hole drilled for your shaft and for the recession for your blunt, for the penny blunt on the end. Uh, comes with a half inch thick disc of two pound poly and what I assume is some three pound poly and then it also comes with uh, a three by three inch chunk of uh, open cell charcoal foam. Now this didn't come with the kit I used up all that foam on other arrows I usually make my own uh, cans but this is some foam that I ordered it's that one it's still 1.8 pound gray charcoal foam so still just as good, it's going to work for us just fine. Um, so first thing you'll need is uh, an arrow kit or your own kit that you've made, uh, charcoal foam uh, or other form of open cell. You don't want, if, you, if you're using your own foam, you don't want your uh, foam to be particularly dense. Uh, some people like to use the, the Joann's foam. I actually have, let's see, I have a chunk of that in the trash that I tore off. Uh, someone gave me some, or I bought some failed arrows. And I, I don't know if my camera will be able to capture it, but this stuff is just not very, it doesn't resist hardly at all. Now, the Joann's foam will work. You'll get some passing arrows out of them, but it doesn't last very long. They break down quickly. Whereas with this, you can, I don't know if you can see it, but there's much more resistance in, in the squish here. But it's not super crazy hard like, uh, you know, some couch cushion foams. Uh, this foam is typically used in computer packing and things like that. Um, it should you should have some resistance, um, but not not tons. It's hard to explain in a in a video. Um, if you order foam, you can get it from places like foamforyou.com or Foam by Mail, the Foam Factory. Um, and if you look for their packing foams, you'll find charcoal foam. And I'll try and remember I'll to include a link to where I bought this from in the description. Um, and I believe that I ordered the 1.8 pound uh, charcoal packing foam, and it works great. I've made a dozen arrows with them, and they've the, the only time they failed for hit was after I'd used them for a year, which was pretty good for a year of really heavy use. Anyway, getting back into our building, uh, let's just get started. First thing you're going to want to do is, if you're building a modular, you don't you can skip this step. But if you are building a on a traditional arrow, so I've got this shaft here missing a fletching, but it's still good. Um, if you're building a traditional arrow, you need to slide your can onto the shaft first. If you don't, you're going to have your blunted end here that's too big for this to pass, and then you've got your fletchings on the other end, which is too big to pass through this. So then you'll have everything all built up, and your can won't be on, and you'll have to undo it. Learn that from experience. So slide your can on, and let's get ready to blunt the tip. So when we talk about penny uh, blunting or blunting the tip, um, the Dagger here and uh, Belagarth rule books require that you have a penny blunt or metal equivalent affixed to the end of the shaft. This is so that when the arrow, let's slide the can up so you can see, is fired, you don't have that itty bitty surface area there punching into the back of your foam. Over time that's going to erode it very quickly and if the shaft breaks loose at all, you know, glue bonds break down, your shaft is just going to punch through all that foam uh, once it breaks loose, if it gets enough force behind it. It's not good. So attaching the penny blunt to the end here disperses that force over a wider area so that it's not pushing hard directly. Well, you get the point. We're disper It's all about force dispersal. Uh, so, we have to penny blunt. To do that, to affix a penny to the end, uh, you need to build it up with some duct tape. And you want that duct tape to be as wide as your channel is deep. Looking at the forged foam kit, it's as deep as just about two layers of this, about maybe an inch. So, I've already got a, a roll of tape started that is tapered for that. And make sure that you line it up nice and even here. Uh, you don't want your tape to meander side to side and just start rolling it and once it's rolled up to the diameter of the penny then we can actually get the penny affixed to it so let's fast forward through all that 
All right, so now that we've got the duct tape all done and nice and flush with the end of our shaft there, if you mander it up a little bit um, or down a bit, that's fine. If you go up too far, just take a razor blade and even off the top. That's what I ended up doing on this one. But once, you're done, once you've done that, you're ready to go ahead and affix your penny to the top. Now you can use some duct tape and just tape the heck out of it uh, to get it to stay on, but as you use arrows, they tend to want, the, the penny kind of tends to move side to side just the tiniest bit, and that eats away at the duct tape, and eventually you'll have pennies kind of force their way out and off the end of the shaft. Now with all that duct tape, the shaft still isn't going to punch through anything, but it still fails your weapon. So I tend, I like to use striping tape when I'm affixing these here. So just take a few strips of tape. In this case, I'm just going to break the striping tape into two, three pieces and tape it down well onto your blunted end here. So a couple pieces each way, or a piece each way, and then one good wrap on the outside here to help keep everything in. So I've never had a problem with pennies punching through the side via that doing that method. So once we've got everything penny blunt Okay, uh, the battery's died on me there, so pardon the pardon the little skip. So once we've finished up our our uh, penny capping here, uh, before you do any gluing, go ahead and check the fit. Make sure that it fits down into the can as deep as you need it to. It should be nice and flush with the top of the can here. If it's not, it's not a big deal. Just pop it off, take a razor blade, and cut around the bottom. You can see I've done that, done that there. It was a little bit too big. Uh, overestimated how deep it was. Not a big deal. So, once you're certain that everything's all nice and affixed and it fits nice and snug, we're ready to start gluing. Now you can use whatever glue you uh, whatever glue you like. You can use hot glue, dap, spray glue. Some people seem to be adamantly <clears throat> excuse me, against hot glue, but that is an unfounded fear. It doesn't increase the hit of the arrow in the least. I build all of my arrows with it, uh, at least during these steps, and it works just fine. So, uh, start, put a little bit of hot glue around your, or whatever glue you're using, around your can here, follow the directions as indicated, and if you're using hot glue, look quick. So just a little around the can, and get that sucker down in there, and let it cool up a little bit. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and move on to our next step. If you're using the Forge Foam Kit, you'll put down your piece of uh, more dense 3-pound foam first. So just take the piece of foam and put on a little hot glue. And make sure you get this nice and centered. It's okay if it over goes over the edges a little bit. It's more important that it's centered than it than it be lined up perfectly on one edge. You don't want your your arrows to be leaning one side or the other. One, it's aesthetically kind of unpleasant, and two, um, a bend in the arrow is going to make it wobbly in flight. Uh, you want nice symmetrical arrows. So same deal as with the last. Just put a little bit of glue here. and put your final piece on. Again, nice and centered. All right. So if you're using hot glue, you'll want to give that uh, a few minutes to cool. If you're using DAP, you got to give it time to cure. Spray glue, similarly. You just want it to the bond to set up so that it's not going to be bouncing about while uh, geez, uh, while it's curing. You want everything to settle up in place. But while we're doing that, we can move on to our next step as long as we're careful. So a common point of failure for arrows is in the back, on the back here, this foam will get worn away as the shaft is used and it'll start to wobble a lot and that'll fail an arrow. So take a little bit of hot glue, and this is why I use hot glue to build so I don't have to use more than one adhesive. Just go ahead and insert some hot glue down into this gap here and build up a little bit of a mound of it around the shaft. Doesn't have to be huge. Uh, there we 
go. Just like that. Okay, see ya. Alright, so, once uh, you've got that on, let it uh, cure. If you don't have access to hot glue, that's fine. Uh, you'll still kind of want to build that up a little bit so that it's not going to go anywhere. If you're using dap, maybe put a little dap down in that, uh, that groove there so that that can solidify and gel up a bit. Or just put a ring of tape directly underneath this. Um, and that'll help stop it from, from wobbling as much as going from a two inch disc down to a three sixteenths uh, inch shaft, maybe a quarter inch shaft at most. So, uh, ooh, almost had a car accident there, that was sweet. Uh, so we need to take a little time since I am using hot glue to let this cure, or cool, I mean. Okay, so our glue's uh, solidified now so that's good if you have any excess that comes over the side here you can just take a razor blade trim it off a little bit but hot glue once it dries is just as flexible as the foam it's on so really nothing to worry about there um, next step is going to be to reinforce all this with a little bit of strapping tape so you can use duct tape but again strapping tape tends to work a little bit better just need a few strips of this to go crossways and this is just going to help hold everything together and help your your can last a little bit longer now with everything foam you want to make sure that you're not pre-compressing anything uh, as you go so it don't pull down terribly tight during this step here We're just trying to add some extra reinforcement to hold things together nice and tight well I don't mean nice and tight like that but anyway Okay, so I uh, had to backtrack a little bit. Once you're done taping everything up, uh, you're ready to move on to applying the head. You can do this in one of a couple of ways. You can use spray glue, carpet tape, or double-sided duct tape. Uh, actually, that's really about it. Uh, some sort of tape or spray glue. You don't want to use a liquid adhesive when you're using open cell because it's just going to soak it right up and make a big soppy mess. If you're going to use spray glue, um, I use 3M Super 77. It's decently priced and it works pretty pretty well for, for foam. I like to use it for big things like shields or blades on swords um, or for applying open cell. Um, I've heard good things about the DAP spray glue or the I think they've got 3M Super 90 as well. That's a little bit excessive for, for our use, uh, but any of those will work. Um, I'm going to be using carpet tape today because my spray glue can is actually gunked up uh, because I didn't clean it after my last use. So that is my own fault. So using uh, carpet tape, just take and put a little square of it on top of your can and peel back the lining on it. There we go. And then just take your can and get it as centered as possible. I'm awful at this particular step. There we go. And there we go. So nice and on there. Um, if you're using spray glue, I typically spray around the side of the can as well when I spray the back. And when you, when you use the glue, follow directions and everything. But if, when you've got the glue on the sides, then you can pull these corners up and it'll mold nice and tight to the can and give you a, a nice look. In this case, I'm just going to use a little bit of extra strapping tape to hold those corners down. So I'll just take four, so four pieces and go around and pull in our, your corners, keep them tight. Now you want to be careful when using tape on, on an arrow. Uh, you, you can't have any tape go on to the face of the arrow. In Bell and Dag, that is an actual rule, or at least in Dag, it may not be in the Book of War. Some t I, I, I do both games, so sometimes I get a little bit confused about what rules and what. Just follow the rules for your, for your game and you'll be fine. Either way, even if your game allows it, don't put, don't put tape on the face of your arrows. It's going to make them sting like hell, and uh, it's probably going to hurt your opponent. 
And when we're arching, uh, the onus of safety is always on the archer, not on the opponent. We're responsible for making our equipment as, as safe and as friendly as we can, and for ensuring that it is always uh, safe for play. Uh, any extra steps that can be taken to make our, our stuff even, even better should be taken. So, once you've got that strapped on, make sure the head's being pulled even. Again, we don't want it canting to one side or the other. Uh, take one final strip and just wrap it around the base. This is just, again, to help secure it on. Give it a nice streamlined look. And if you see that it's getting pulled one way or the other terribly much, this one's canting a little bit to one side. Just take another piece and pull it until it's in line and let it hold in place. Tape down here is just fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Tape up here is a definite no-no. So, once you've got this on, you're ready to move on to putting your cover on. Uh, with these force foam kits, uh, with arrows this size, I find that you need about a 9 inch by 9 inch piece of cloth. Uh, remember that we can't have, at least in Dell and uh, Dag and Bell, uh, don't use solid yellow covers. I mean, on arrows, no one's going to mistake a javelin, uh, an arrow for a javelin, but, you know, lowest common denominator here. And besides, you want, you want your arrows to look poppy. You want them to look unique to you. Because if everyone has black carbon shafts and black cloth with black tape, then your arrows are just going to end up in a pile of someone else's arrows at the end of the day, and you're going to be missing a few shafts. Use something that is distinctive to you, put your emblem on it, make it yours. So, um, before I move on to that step, as a personal preference, I like to clip the corners of my foam just a little bit, um, just so that the cover will roll down a bit more uh, flat. Um, gives it more of a rounded tip look. There's nothing wrong with the with a square tipped arrow. Uh, it's not illegal. It's just a matter of aesthetics and personal preference for me. And you can do whatever you want with them. I've seen some people <clears throat> cut them so that they're octagonal um, and stuff like that, and those look kind of cool. Uh, I don't know that it really affects the flight or, or the aerodynamics of the arrow. Just what looks good to you. So, uh, affixing the head. Uh, you can use, you don't want to use strapping tape or duct tape on the outside when you fix your cloth. You want to use cloth tape. It just looks better. So I've got a little bit of hockey tape here. Hockey tape's wonderful. It's way better than athletic tape. It holds on nice. So, I've got my 9 inch uh, piece of square cloth here. Um, I'm using green just because I had scrap green line about. And I'm going to pull off uh, 8 pieces of this tape. Okay, now that we've got uh, eight pieces of tape all set up and ready for us to go, let's go ahead and get our cloth on here. So, drape it over nice and light, and get it evened out to where it's going to cover the entire arrow all the way around evenly without exposing any of the open cell. You need to do this before you start taping, otherwise you'll be spending a bunch of time undoing all your taping. So, then on the flat parts, not on the corners, go ahead and place piece of tape and as we do this you want to be careful that you're not pre-compressing your foam that's a good way to make your equipment fail right out of the you know right out right at the get-go because um, the compression especially with arrows is what makes them pass with arrows the foam isn't really there to make it hit nice it's there to sl the open cell slows down the the speed it slows down the arrow uh, that's why we use open cell which pops out so uh, don't pre-compress your foam. Once you've done four sides, and this is just aesthetics, but take your time. Make your arrows look good. Um, fold in your corners and tape those down. And I always go opposite sides, so that way even if I do tug a little bit on the foam, uh, it evens itself out. And if you're, you find that your cloth is too long, you can always trim that up. This will be fine, but... And once you've got that all nice and on there, go ahead and take your roll of cloth tape. And starting, that's fine, there's our open cell right there. So starting just at where our open cell and our can meet, we'll start wrapping. You don't want to start up on your open cell because you're going to compress your foam. And that wouldn't be very, that wouldn't be very good at all. So. So, once we've got our can wrapped and our head completed, that is it for the construction of the head of the arrow. The last step is to make sure that you've got a draw stop in place if required. 
Um, always, again, always refer to your particular rule book for whatever game you're playing. But in Dag and Bell, uh, Dag and Bellogarth, you can only draw arrows to 28 inches. So, um, this is a common mistake that a lot of inexperienced or new weapon checkers make, so pay close attention. When you're measuring an arrow for its draw stop, you measure from the inside of the knock, because that is the point from which the arrow will be fired, that's where the string rests. So I'm going to use a cloth measuring tape here, and we're going to place it just at the inside of that knock, and run it up our shaft here, and this is 30 and a half inches. So I need to add a draw stop. If your arrow shaft up to your can isn't 28 inches, then your head is acting as the draw stop, and you're fine, you don't need to add one. But if you need a draw stop, find 28, and I always go back a quarter of an inch, just to make sure that uh, my arrows don't fail. Because weapon checkers are people too, uh, believe it or not, and uh, m mistakes are made. So just like we did when we uh, made our, when we blunted the end of the shaft here, just take and get a roll of tape going uh, to make your uh, draw stop. Now a draw stop is a physical indicator, not just a visual one. So it needs to actually be thick enough that when pulled against the arrow rest of your bow, it will physically stop it. At most events, this is tested by placing the arrow on a table and pulling, a, pulling it against the edge. If it easily slides up over the edge of the table, then it fails. So you need to make your draw stop about... Okay, my uh, camera went a little bit wonky on me there, but that's okay. So we're finishing up our draw stop on our Forge Tone Belt Arrow. And that should just about do it. Okay, so that's about, that's between an eighth and a quarter. Not, not huge, not particularly small. So let's go ahead and give it a quick test. So you place it on the edge of a table. In this case, it's going up to this little piece of cardboard. And as you can see, it's thick enough that it's not letting the arrow slide past. So that is how to construct a, an arrow using a, an arrow can kit, whether it's one that you've bought or that you've homemade. Again, if you'd like to see how to make your own cans or make your own arrows, uh, check out our other video on that. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more content. Thanks for watching and have a good one.